Tournament, tournament, charge for rhyme. Greedy comics, Twister, Hell of Six, Hell of Wacky Nick, Take a Bad Hits, Take a Bad Hits, Sardamins. What's up, you guys? Shardmas Prime here, doing my first ever G.I. Joe action figure review on all of the G.I. Joe Classified Series Wave 1 figures. We are looking at Roadblock, Snake Eyes, Destro, Duke, and Scarlet. If you're trying to get your Classified Series figures, you can do so at me. Big, big, get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. And while you're down there, please go ahead and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. We need those 1 million subscribers. And G.I. Joe 6 inch fully articulated figures is something that I have always wanted to collect. I am not a big G.I. Joe fan. I just got to put that out there. But I have always been saying that I wanted 6 inch G.I. Joes. And I really like the packaging that we're getting for each of these figures the artwork on the front of them looks fantastic i really like the designs that we're seeing right over here i like how destro has his unique look you know all of them have a, a number on the top along with the star and then destro has the cobra logo right there on the very top as opposed to the star so that's very cool to see and then on the side you can see how they're all numbered and then on the back you don't get a reap or anything but you get this awesome poster image right over here with the gorgeous baron as which i will pre-order i'm hoping to get my pre-orders in for the next figures and then on the side of the packaging they each have a unique piece of artwork that just looks fantastic and it wraps around to the front so i think that is very cool man and then not much more at the bottom so let's get to it and crack these things open <laughs> So here are the G.I. Joe figures out of the packaging, and these are sick. Okay, so I'm going to get into the accessories of each of these, and I just have to give you guys full disclosure over here. I am not a G.I. Joe fan. Uh, this is always the show that came after Transformers. G.I. Joe, uh, WWE, those are franchises that I was into as a kid just a little bit. Like, my G.I. Joe figures were hand-me-downs, and I always treated them like you twist them around and then watch them spin. I remember doing that with my Cobra Commander. That was my favorite favorite one my favorite color is blue uh, I used to throw them together and stuff like they really were not my favorite action figures zero memories of getting excited to go to a Toys R Us or something and get a new G.I. Joe they're all hand-me-downs I didn't really care so much about them but if you've been following this channel long enough from the very beginning I've always said I would be down to acquire fully articulated detailed six inch Joes anyway let's go from left to right over here let's start with Deathstro. He has his briefcase right here and this gun and this gun, which all look great. I like the sculpted details. I like this paint right here. This gold paint looks fantastic. Now, this is not a very realistic take of G.I. Joe as someone who's not really a fan, doesn't really care that much. It doesn't bother me at all. However, seeing a more realistic version is something that I always imagined and would actually prefer to see. So while I'm not, you know, you know, Joe fan or anything, I, I still actually prefer a more realistic take but this looks awesome as it is i do like the red that we're seeing over the black nice looking scope right there that looks sick yeah i feel weird complaining about anything because i just feel like i don't have a valid opinion from not being a big fan you know what i mean but hey as far as figures go i'm liking everything that i'm seeing right over here really like that paint uh, you don't get the same paint right over here it's not painted at all nice looking briefcase i dig this a lot nice cool silver paint right over there for the buckles and the handle then on the inside you have your beep boop beep boop, beep boop you know your computer and then you have the secret money stored right over there and That'll just snap shut. <laughs> and I'm going to do something a little different with this review. I'm going to kind of go over the articulation while I'm talking about the details because there's five different figures to look at. And the articulation on these is very similar. But anyway, looking at that head sculpt, that looks awesome. Deathstro was one of my favorite characters, one of my favorite G.I. Joe figures. Again, I didn't have much, but yeah, Deathstro and Cobra Commander were like my top two favorite ones. At first, I was really bummed out about the added line work over here and I still kind of am that there's there was something just really neat about that perfectly clean chrome dome about Deathstro that I really liked so while I would prefer to see one without all the sculpted lines in here I just I still like this <laughs> I still think it's very badass very nice vibrant shiny silver throughout uh, you do get a little restriction right over here with him looking up 
you know, you're not going to get him looking up much just due to that collar getting in the way. So you can see he will look up that far, but he will look down very far as well. We do get a neck joint in here with all of these, which I think is very cool. So you can see how much movement you get right there. I think that's pretty neat. And then we get some nice sculpted rib patterns right over here on the chest and on his shoulder. We get butterfly joints with all of these figures, which is awesome. I really like that, you know, so nice standard Hasbro super articulated articulation on these double jointed elbows look really good and everything right there. I love that gunmetal gray. The hands are sculpted. We get trigger fingers on both sides and horizontal hinges on both sides. On this side, he has a little forearm rocket launcher thing. So that's pretty awesome. I like that. On the back right here, he does have a peg hole. A little bit of paint missing right over here. I don't know of anything that's supposed to go in there, but hey, it's cool that that is there. I think that helps with flight stands and swapping accessories if you want to do that. There's your death stroke. But nice texturing right over here on the plastic, too. Look at that. It looks like everything's made out of leather. Something with the upper torso. You can see the zipper and all that stuff. And then, yeah, of course, you get the chain right over there. But I like the texturing. I like the sculpted detail. I mean, the Deathstro one, I really dig. This is really one of my favorite figures from this wave right here. I even like the variety of color that we're just seeing on the boots. And of course, we get nice looking treads and peg holes at the bottom of the feet. And then here's all the accessories that we get with Scarlet. And I forgot to mention that each of these figures do come with their own coffee stain. So can't forget that. But anyway, she has three knives over here and she has her crossbow, which is cool. But I just feel like Hasbro just kind, kind of messes these up every time. Like with all the Chewbacca's, like it just comes apart super easy. And same thing with this one. This is actually my biggest gripe out of the whole set is how this crossbow comes apart super easy. And you know how Robo don't know? I feel like Hasbro don't know crossbow. Like that's just always a fail somehow with this coming apart for me anyway. I guess not a complete fail. I like how it tabs in right here on the back. So it does hold together a little better than the Chewbacca uh, bowcasters, right? Is, is that what it's called? Like, you know, screw that up. But overall, I do like the sculpt of it and everything. Uh, maybe a little color added to it would have been cool. And getting the hand at the bottom of this crossbow is very tricky to do. And then once I've done that, this thing will not stay on. It, it just refuses to. Yeah, see? Yeah, there it goes. Okay, but it just comes off very, very easy. So that's frustrating. Then you get these three different knives. Two of them are identical to each other. And then you have this one unique one right here here, uh, which I believe is meant for storage on the chest holster or chest sheath right there, which is kind of an interesting thing that it's downward. I guess that's a real thing. I don't know a whole lot about knives to properly judge. Then she has her arrows stored right over here upside down. Again, weird choice, I think, to have the weapons stored upside down. And then you could go ahead and put her knives right over here in the back, which I think is, again, kind of a weird choice. Trying different angles. Let's see. I don't know. I guess that looks kind of cool. I, I just feel like it looks kind of weird, but whatever. I'm happy she has full-on weapon storage, well, aside from the crossbow. <laughs> So here's looking at Scarlet, and I'm just not really familiar with the character much at all. I do know what she's supposed to look like in my mind, and I'm just thinking that, you know, she usually has a darker red hair color right there, uh, closer to red than orange, but, you know, she has the freckles right over there. She's known for being a redhead, so it's not wrong or anything. It's just a lot, you know, brighter than I was kind of imagining. So the lip paint looks really good. The eye color looks really good. See that? Nice bright blue color. And then the rest of her looks all right as well. A little bit of a paint smudge. Don't like that. And it looks pretty clean on the star. She has the butterfly joint just like Destro as well as the neck joint. Single jointed elbows though. You can see some nice zipper sculpt right there. Nice seams, nice touches of silver over here. You get that copper color. And then some texturing on the belt and then as far as everything else goes i mean just everything looks really good because like they break everything up with different sculpting textures you know what i mean i really like that a lot there's the scarlet nalgas and then there's looking at the knee joints you can see those blue pins sticking out right there a bit distracting i don't know what's up with these lines right here a little splotch right there shoes don't look too bad or the boots don't look too bad anyway and then she does have peg holes at the bottom of her feet oh and that ponytail sculpt looks pretty good i like that and for duke we get four accessories we get his two guns his his backpack and his binoculars which actually look pretty cool they do remind me of star wars a little bit i don't know but or it could be a canteen i think it's binoculars though and it does come with a little peg that sticks out right over here so you could port this right into his back so he does have a belt port just for that so that's cool maybe I have it upside down maybe it looks better just like this so 
I like having that. And then you have this gun right over here. Just looks like a regular Glock, I guess. Maybe upgraded and changed. I don't know. Or it could be a Nerf gun. I don't know. But anyway, it looks pretty good. I do like the detail and I do like that gold paint. And he has a hip holster right over here on his right side. So it just goes into place very easily. I dig that hole at the bottom of it. And then you get this bigger gun right here that has a bunch of blue light things going on. Which, uh, you know, it matches up with the figure and everything. But... Um, yeah, you know, I'm a little on the fence about that. I can understand why they're going this route and everything. I don't have that much to complain about because, you know, of course I'm not a hardcore Joe fan or anything. However, you know, a more realistic look is uh, what I would prefer to see. But yeah, this backpack, exactly kind of what I would be looking for. I like this, you know. My dad was in the army and to this day he still has that collapsible shovel. I remember that well. Anyway, this ports right into the back of the figure very easily, so that's cool. <laughs> And then here's looking at Duke, and I definitely remember Duke, and I think this looks great. I really like this a lot. Oh, uh, man, really good detail with the hair. I like how we get different colors of blonde. And then you can see the shortcut right here coming around. I like how it lightens up when you get to the bottom of it. Really good looking face sculpt. I mean, yeah, this does have that, you know, that whole all-American hero kind of look, which I really dig. He has the scar right here on the right side. That may be from the show and the comic. I don't remember a scar, but hey, you know, it doesn't look bad. But I did have to see if I could take this off and put it on a vintage collection Captain America figure because it just kind of reminds me of Face Off Cap a little bit. And yeah, that... <laughs> I mean, the neck is a little on the long side, but yeah, I, mean, I think the head does look a little on the small side. Actually, this actually kind of looks pretty good. I was thinking the head looked too small, but I don't know. I kind of like it. Still looks on the small side. Maybe if it was a little bit closer down into the neck more, you know, the long... The neck looks a little bit too beefy for this head sculpt, but still, it's not awful, right? Didn't you guys want to see this? I did. But getting that back on there and looking at the rest of the figure, you can see that we get these nice details throughout, man. Can't really complain about any of that. I like this uh, lapel right over here, or this strap anyway, and you get some kind of weird device. And then I did get some weird splotchiness going on, and you can see some glue smearing around. That does bug me a little bit, but fortunately I can cover it with this strap right here. I do like the sculpted detail in the fabric, or the, you know, the fake fabric that we're seeing made out of plastic. The forearm looks good, realistic. Nice looking gloves right there. I don't know why the watch is orange. Very weird color, especially having this being red right here. I don't know. There's just a lot of color on here. Doesn't look too bad though. You know, again, the more realistic look would have been preferred. I could say that over and over again. I mean, look at this detail right here. You get the Duke butt. You get these Duke wrinkles right here in the thighs with that texturing. That just looks so cool. So I love seeing all the texture details. It just would have been great to have more paint that matched all that realistic texturing going Going on, you know, that's all I'm saying. Like, you know, like these boots look okay. They got some weird, you know, glowy thing going on right here. Uh, but yeah, I understand why they're not going super realistic. And by the way, all the figures have the boot rotation and the drop down hips, which I love. That's just a great piece of articulation. But one thing that bothers me is that just on the left side, the laces aren't matching up with that line in the center of the boot. So I'll try to get everything lined up and it's just off, as opposed to the right side right here, where it does look a lot more centered. You know, it's still just a little off, but this one, yeah, a lot more off right there. But anyway, you can see that we get peg holes right there at the bottom of the feet. Looking at Roadblock accessories, he has the biggest weapon and then one of the smallest weapons. So you can see this guy is painted with some beautiful gunmetal gray paint. I really like this a lot. Looks dope. I guess maybe a different color right here, but you can even see some detailed texturing right there on the side. I dig that. And he does come with a little sheath on his vest, so you could go ahead and port this into place like that. And that works out pretty well. Then he has this big old laser cannon thingy doodle, which, yeah, that looks dope, man. It looks really cool. However, you know, I do prefer the realistic weapons. I'm not really familiar with this character. I don't know if he always had, like, a big weapon. For some reason, I, I just have a memory of a black dude repelling, and I don't know if it's supposed to be roadblock or not. But he does come with a little cartridge right here, which I don't really understand the whole point of this. It, it's kind of neat, I guess, that you could take that out. But, I mean, who's really going to leave this out, right? You're going to have that left in there the whole time, no? Right? Anyway, he can hold this through, uh, holding the top and side right here like that, or you could have him holding the bottom right over here in the side. Either way you want, I like that we have display options with this. And yeah, you get some nice blue highlights throughout, which do look cool. I like the translucent plastic right here. That looks dope. <laughs> 
Now, I do like how the head sculpt looks for the most part. I'm just not happy with how the eye paint came out over here. I don't know. I feel like his right eye is a little bit more inward than it should. I feel like there's a little bit of extra paint coming over uh, the whole eyeball right over here. I don't know. Actually, when I look at it like that, it looks a little better. So it maybe just depends on the lighting and the direction. I don't know. It's just a little bit off. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. But I do think the sculpt looks really good. I like how there's sculpt in his beard right there. I think the flesh tone looks pretty consistent with the head and the rest of the body. Not looking too bad. And then you can see that the vest looks pretty dope right here too. A lot of colors on the vest and everything. So, you know, not all of it really going together. I feel like some of these colors clash, right? I do like that we get a soft material right here for the vest. So while it does hinder articulation, you can still get them crunching forward a bit. And that's coming from that waist crunch. It's like the waist and diaphragm joints are, are very similar, you know? Well, it's like the diaphragm joint motion that you're used to seeing is actually in the waist joint. So you can see it'll still tilt back forward and you can still rock right over there but it also has the ab crunching so you know you can get some movement out of it this is not removable so if you take it off yeah you're, you're breaking it but nice lion tattoo right here on the side i don't know if you know he was originally supposed to have that or not i'm sure joe fans know about that but i think it looks okay i think that's pretty neat to see that it does get broken up with the articulation but i don't mind i'd rather have the articulation than not gloves look pretty good again uh, yeah the colors i don't know man I don't know. But yeah, nice texturing right here on the pants. Again, you get the drop down hip motion with these. Looking pretty good with that gold and everything. Nice details. Again, you get the boot rotation and all that. These all have beautiful ankle pivot and everything. Nice treads and peg holes. And I'm just figuring out right now if you want to take Duke's backpack and port it into the back of Roadblock, that'll work. I guess it'll fit on all the other figures, but yeah, that looks pretty good. And then here's all of Snake Eye's accessories. And I did pre-order the Hasbro Pulse exclusive version a while ago, and it won't be coming out for quite some time still. I think end of August or September or something like that. I think I'm going to cancel that pre-order because I am really happy with what I have already. Plus, I'm not a diehard Joe fan or anything. So anyway, looking at the backpack, I think this looks awesome. I love all those wrinkles in there. Those touches of silver with these buckles look really good. I really like this a lot. You get an extra port on the side for the sheath, which is dope. So he has a cool looking sword as well. Really like that texturing right here. Mine was a little bit warped. I did have to heat it up. And then the sword is all black, looking pretty cool. Nice serrated edges right over here. Nice looking handle. I do like this quite a bit. And I also like that the bottom of the sheath right here is open. So that's cool. And then right here you have the, this kind of gun. And it does have a port in the middle of it. Looks totally made up for G.I. Joe. But what's really neat right here is you could port this sheath on the side. And then you could port this right here on the side of the backpack and now you have all three weapons right there so I love that you get weapon storage I love that you can get all of the accessories or you can have all of these characters holding their weapons all of their weapons not just some of them so I really dig that a lot this looks a little better to me I don't know. he also has this sidearm right here and that's also having a port sticking out so you can do a similar thing like we had done with this over here or you could just plug in the silencer which came with my Baroness Kotobukiya Shoujo statue which I, I couldn't figure out then so yeah I got it thanks guys but yeah that is awesome and then there's storage for both of these which is really cool so you can go ahead and deassemble that and port the silencer in right over here and then get the sidearm in right over there. Then lastly, he has his knife, which I thought was the same as one of Scarlet's knives, but it's not. Eh, definitely not a booby knife. Nope, it's not the same as the booby knife. So yeah, you could go ahead and port this on to the side, which I've actually always had a hard time with this one. I don't know why. I haven't had a hard time with anything else porting into place, but this knife always just wants to stick out like that. Then I was thinking to myself, oh, maybe you bozo, you put it in the wrong way, which, you know, playing match the shape it looks like it's supposed to be this way but you yeah, know for the sake of argument I put it the other way and it's just as lousy and that could be bad when you're posing them around and this is running into stuff I'm gonna try heat this up and try it again ah this hasn't gotten any better I even cut the bottom right over here heating it up did no good uh, that's the best I can do so that's a frustration <laughs> And aside from that, and a little bit of fidgetiness with this figure, I think this thing is a home run of a Snake Eyes. Again, I don't know too much about Snake Eyes, but from everything I do know about him, this figure has what I want to see in a Snake Eyes figure. Now, I do know that the Hasbro Pulse exclusive has the silver right over here, and it has some other added color to it. I'm actually really liking the variety of black that we're seeing on this figure. I just think it looks really good. For instance, we get the glossier black right here, and then we get the matted black right here for the center of 
of the head. So that's great. A little touch of red right over there. I dig how this looks on every angle, man. It just looks dope. I love that stitching on the side. And then nice grenades right here sculpted. This looks really good, man. Just threw out nice texturing on this strap right here. Touches of silver. Some more of that red. Looking really good on these arms, too. Here's looking at his back. Looking at this, it looks really good. Yeah, these waist straps are, are really awesome. And then looking at the hip straps right over here, they look really good with those buckles and everything. I don't like that. But yeah, the legs are sculpted out really nice. Nice texturing on them. Nice knee pads right there. Can't complain about that. I dig it. And then you get the butt pockets. And then here's looking at the wrinkles that go through into all of the joints. Man, again, the texturing right over here is just... Dope. I love the attention to detail on this thing. Just breaks up the figure so well. And when you have a figure that's mostly just one color, you really need that. And yeah, the execution on this figure is just pretty amazing. This is definitely the highlight from the wave for me. And you can clearly see the ninja toes right over there. And we do get peg holes at the bottom of the feet. Ooh, which I got to bring up a point. Book Nice 10 did a great interview with the Marvel Hasbro team. And they talked about how the serial numbers, uh, you know, may not fit on the bottom of the feet because there's already copywritten stuff sculpted on it but this guy has sculpted stuff on each foot plus the printed numbers right over there so yeah, it's possible you guys now to go over snake eyes articulation and again i'm not going over the other figures articulation over here because it's pretty much the same but it is exceptional on the snake eyes you can't get the head to look up that far and with that neck joint oh man that is so sick the neck and head allows them to look down that much you get great neck and head pivoting of course you could turn side to side and you could do that with the neck a bit too or all yeah just as much so, man, that is freaking cool. You got the butterfly joints, which I really like a lot. Man, those can really go far and back. Dig that. Wow, as soon as I feel like I've pushed it as far back as it can go, it goes a little bit farther. So that's awesome. Shoulders go outward that far. Down, rotating full 360. Bicep swivel. Double jointed elbows. And then all of the wrists turn side to side and have a horizontal hinge. You get an ab crunch forward that much. Ab crunch back. You get a waist crunch forward with the ab crunch right over there and then both waist and abs are moving all the way back that far that is insane man you do get some waist pivot right over here and of course you can turn the figure side to side at the waist you get the drop down hips uh testing it out on this side well let's get these weapons out of here it's just in the way you know but yeah he can do the splits and you can do a full 360 right over here getting this kicking all the way up and it'll just turn all the way around you get a thigh swivel up at the top Double jointed knees, which are great. They go all the way in. I love that. We do have the X-Man 87 heel to butt. Do we? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, there we go. We do have the X-Man 87 heel to butt. And then you get the calf rotation right there. And then the ankles do move down. They do move up. And he has beautiful ankle pivot. Now to measure out this G.I. Joe classified wave one figure set, you can see that Snake Eyes is standing just a little over the six inch mark. Roadblock is just a little over the six and a half inch mark. Duke is right at six and a half inches or just a little under. And then Scarlet's right at the six inch mark. And then Deathstro is right at six and a half inches or just a little under. And to rank the figures from this wave, at the bottom I would give it to Scarlet. Uh, again, I don't like the hair color so much. And then, I don't know, there's something about the color palette, like on the shins and on the torso, that just kind of throw me off a little bit. And then next I'm giving it to Roadblock, and then I'm giving it to Duke, and then Destro at number two, and then number one, of course, the Snake Eyes. And then comparing Duke next to some other lead characters from various franchises under the Hasbro umbrella, we have the Star Wars 6-inch Black Series, second Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker right there. We have the Transformers Earthrise Optimus Prime, the Marvel Legends Vintage Collection Captain America, and then we have the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Lightning Collection Red Ranger. And I think Hasbro has actually been doing a really good job with all of these franchises. I'm mostly very happy with all of these lines. And then here's the Wave 1 classified figures. Next to your average 6-inch scale figure, we have the Marvel Legends Big Time Badass Spider-Man. All right, America. Yo, George. Hey, where are you guys all going? Hey, Silver Surfer. It's been a long time. How's it going? Bob! Cobra. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. We need those 1 million subscribers. And a big thank you to all these people over here that go the extra mile to support what I do here on YouTube via crowdfunding. If you're interested in the exclusive videos and early access and sneak peeks and all the other goodies I throw over there, including vlogs, well, you can check it out, link below. If not, ah, that's okay. We get the content over here on YouTube. Now, these figures look 
great and they articulate great as well i mean there's just incredibly posable i really like them a lot man now the color choices that's just the number one complaint with most people with these figures anyway that's the very common thing is people complaining about the color schemes and and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work as well but to be honest with you it's not enough to really bum me out the snake eyes is on another level so that figure gets a whole <laughs> And then the rest of the wave gets a sud rating of... I love it! And I'd like to know what you guys think. I mean, overall, it's a very impressive line. I'm very happy with what I'm seeing over here. I will be getting wave two. I'm probably going to pass on all the variants and all that stuff coming up in the future and everything. I've seen posts about it. It just doesn't interest me. Uh, if they did another wave of figures that were like very classic looking, I would totally be all about getting those, even if it's some of the same characters. You know, having a more realistic look is cool. But yeah, I like these figures a lot. Don't forget to let me know in the comments section. If you want to stay in touch with me over on social media, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and Stardust, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace! That's crispy. And then some texturing for oh shit. Hey, new Shark Miss Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.